Well, hello. We're back again this week, and this week we're going to um, dive into a study of um, the book of Luke. And we've done some study in Luke before, Luke chapter 7, uh, verses 11 through 17. And it's a little tucked away uh, bit of scripture that talks about the miracle of Jesus as he performed this miracle. It's the only one recorded of the four synoptic gospels. It's the only one. Luke is the only author that actually records this miracle. And uh, the woman is not named, but it's a widow woman. Her son is raised to life. Um, so we're going to, we're going to jump into that in just a minute, but, um, I want to change things up a little bit. And I feel like this morning when I was preparing for, for this, uh, for this video, I uh, just wanted to give someone an opportunity to, to make a commitment because I feel very strongly that, that someone's going to watch this video and, and I want you to have the opportunity to accept Christ. So if if I'm speaking to you, I, I just want to lead you right now into the throne room of grace, and I want to uh, give you a moment to uh, just an open invitation to invite Jesus into your heart. And because, you know, truly without the Spirit of God living within you, you won't truly be able to understand Scripture. You truly won't be able to get the most out of it because the Spirit of God, when when you give your heart to Jesus, the Spirit of God comes to live within you and the Spirit gives you uh, understanding and it just illuminates the scripture and it just gives you this joy and this um, this excitement about uh, walking with God. And so we believe that walking with God or, or a relationship and being saved is like a, it's, it's truly a journey. So I want today to be your starting point. Everybody has to start somewhere. I want today to be your starting point, and I want to um, give you something to think about today. Um, this is a this is a miracle recorded, like I said, by Luke, and I just want to say that Luke is a physician. He's the only non-Jewish writer of of the four Gospels. He was a, a detail-oriented person, and he um, obviously felt compelled to include this part, uh, this miracle, in his recordings and his writings. Um, two, I want to give you a little bit more of the backdrop in that this is apparently early in Jesus's earthly ministry. You know, he only ministered for three, three and a half years on the earth. And so, so the setting is, is that Jesus was in Capernaum, which is the north side of, of the kingdom of Israel, the, the nation of Israel. It's the north side of uh, the Sea of Galilee. And we pick up the story that he has to travel to, or he's going to travel to a, a town, a small farming village called Nain. And it's about 48 kilometers to the southwest of Capernaum. Um, Capernaum's on the north side of the Sea of Galilee, and um, this little farming village is out of the way. It's kind of insignificant. It's off the beaten path. And we're not told really as to why he's going there. But he just experienced a miracle in healing the centurion servant in Capernaum. And they pack up and they leave. And there's scripture is going to tell us. I'm going to read it all. But I'm just giving you the backdrop. Um, there's a, quite a bit of people following. So, but I want to say, uh, I want to preface this by saying something that, that I learned this morning. Is that... Um, God is an on-time God. And you may think that the Lord has tarried or the Lord has even actually forgotten about you or your need. Uh, I want to encourage you today with this story because God shows up right on time in, in this situation. But I also want this video to be about a teaching element about the, I want to, with the Holy Spirit to impress upon us the value of prayer the importance of prayer and how prayer by both sides by more than one side prayer comes together and how god is so immense in his the totality of his being and how he weaves all this together and i'm going to try to piece this together but i'm going to go ahead and jump in and read the scripture so to give you an idea exactly what i'm talking about 
Like I said, it's Luke chapter 7, verses 11. Uh, this is from the uh, CSB translation. It says, uh, a widow's son raised to life. Uh, verse 11, afterward, he was on his way to a town called Nain. His disciples and a large crowd were traveling with him. Just as he neared the gate of the town, a dead man was being carried out. He was his mother's only son, and she was a widow. A large crowd from the city was also with her. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said, don't weep. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. Um, the, uh, the Greek, I heard one commentator say that in the Greek, the word is like, had compassion on. Uh, it's like uh, you have this gut feeling, like this gut-wrenching moment. Uh, it was more than just when you just casually read the scripture it was more than that and the greek the greek is a more expressive language than english and so we kind of lose in the translation we kind of lose the effect that jesus is really like almost disturbed you know his humanity is like he gets this gut-wrenching feeling that he sees this procession this funeral procession as they're entering into the gate of the town this procession's coming out of town and so um, I just, I just wanted you to know that, that Jesus' humanity, uh, he, he groaned in his spirit. Even though he is God and he is, in essence, omniscient, but he's only omniscient to a point. You remember he gave up his true omniscience as the Son of Man. When he became flesh, he was, uh, having to, uh, rely on the Father through prayer and i'm gonna to get to explain a little bit later and hopefully in a minute as to try to tie this together so he um so he tells the lady don't weep um yeah verse 14 then he came up and touched the open coffin okay now this is still like old testament so he's actually in violation of an old testament law he wasn't supposed to, you weren't supposed to touch the dead or have anything to do with the dead. It was make you ceremonially unclean. So, but Jesus is not your normal preacher. <laughs> he's not your normal person. He, uh, he's truly the Lord. So when he touched it, he says, well, I'll just say this. When he touched the coffin, I think that was kind of a statement when he approached the um the body he was making a statement to everybody around there like everybody you know everybody had to stop and look and like what is he doing like no one did that you know that they and it says there's a large crowd coming out with the lady with the widow woman and there's a large crowd coming into town so this at this point there's a, a massive amount of people and now Jesus approaches the coffin and uh, I think it's I think it's amazing. And first thing he says is, "Don't weep." Then he came up and touched the, the open coffin, and the pallbearer stopped. And he said, "Young man, I tell you, get up." The dead man sat up and began to speak. And Jesus gave him to his mother. Then fear came over everyone, and they glorified God, saying, "A great prophet has risen among us, and God has visited his people." This report about him went throughout Judea and all the vicinity. So, I just want to say that what makes this story really, really special to me is that you have a woman who just recently lost her husband, and that was kind of a that was a that was a gut punch. Okay, she's just lost her husband. And now her son, which is probably in his 20s, I guess. And it's her only child, apparently, because there's no one else mentioned in the scripture. So this, you know, in an ancient Jewish custom or their laws was that the son would take care of his mom if the father died. No matter what he was doing, no matter what he had going on, he had, if he had a house full of kids, his responsibility now, he'd either move 
to where his mom was or he moved his mom into his house, whatever, but he would take care of his mother. That was, that was not only the honorable thing to do, but that was what the law uh, demanded him to do. So now this young man has died and we're not told exactly why he died. We just know that he died. And so this woman, I can only imagine the night before was praying and probably crying out to God and probably had a lot of questions. Like someone who's watching this video right now, I feel that you have a lot of questions and something, there's maybe even several things have not really went your way. Like this widow woman and she's crying out to God and she's asking all these questions. And I'm gonna just say, it's not wrong for us to question and ask God the hard questions like why? It's not wrong. It's not, and you know, a lot of people will probably argue against that and say we're not. We're just supposed to just take it up and just take it and and go. But but even Jesus hanging from the cross, he asked the Father, "Why hast thou forsaken me?" Okay, so just know that Jesus, as a, the Son of Man, he knows and he empathizes with us, and so he Jesus doesn't even know what's going on in his humanity his limitation that through being a man being born of the flesh and being a, a person a normal person walking around he does not know when he sees this funeral procession he does not know that this woman has lost her only son he does not know her needs but listen what he does know he had been praying all day before he had just left a pretty much a revival when he healed the centurion's servant They've been having church, if you will, and the Spirit of God was active and alive and on him and speaking to him. He was speaking to the to the Father, and the Holy Spirit was giving him understanding and great understanding. So you know, this is what the kicker is. Okay, so he has to get up because it's a 48-kilometer distance between Capernaum and the village of Nain. So he has to get up before the sun even came up probably and make his journey and remember he's got a big entourage with him so they have to get up and they have to start walking and he's walking and because of his prayer life to the father jesus and because of this woman's prayer life she's interceding she's praying to god lord i need help i need to do something i have lost my only source of income i have no one else to take care of me and so she's praying to the Father. Jesus is praying probably something like, Lord, lead me wherever you need me to go. We just had this miracle happen here, but I sense in my spirit that, that I need to go. So they get up before the sun even comes up and starts making that uphill climb because it's 100 feet higher in elevation from Capernaum to Nain. It's quite a distance and it's uphill. And it's going to be a pretty arduous journey. So they start out early and they get there right on time as the funeral procession is coming out of the town. And I'm just telling you that that is not an accident, that that is a beautiful act of God. That's what the power of prayer does when you have people who are yielded to the spirit, people listening to the spirit, people praying in the spirit. And the only way that you can pray in the spirit is if you're born again. So I just want to encourage you today that if you give your heart to the Lord and be filled with the Spirit of God, be born again, that you can have the same power and you can have this same ability. You can have the same intimacy with the Father that Jesus had, the same intimacy that, that this, this widow woman had. She had an active prayer life. I'm telling you, in these coming days, we're not going to make it if we don't have an active prayer life. There's so much coming against us. And I just want to encourage someone today, you remember that this place where, where Jesus was headed, this, this village, it was an insignificant place. It was an, a place that was off the beaten path. It was a place that not many people go. And I'm sure that the, the people that were with Jesus were probably scratching their head and wondering, well, why are we going there? But because the Spirit of the Lord led Jesus to that place. It's not because Jesus was still God in his omniscience, that he said, okay, I'm just going to go there. No, Jesus was totally, absolutely dependent on his prayer life and the Holy Spirit of God to give him the understanding. So I want you to be encouraged today. If you 
or the person who um, paused the video earlier today, earlier, and said a, a simple prayer to God, I, I want to know about it. I want to know if that person was you. Um, I encourage you to do that. I encourage you to get that nailed down, get that relationship with Christ through faith, not of works. I want you to understand how much God loves you and understand how important that is and how that's all going to play together and that how God will move in your life when you do that. So that's all I have for you this week. We'll be praying for you. But I please uh, drop me a comment in the uh, comment section if it's you. I don't care if it's two, two years later, just whatever. Uh, I don't care if it's five years from now. I want to know about it. I want to know if you watched this video and the Spirit moved on you. Uh, today, we had a wonderful time in, in service, and, and the Spirit was moving, and it just was a beautiful thing. And I'm telling you, there's nothing more wonderful than being a child of God and knowing that you have peace with God and knowing that, that you have a place in heaven secured and that could be you and I'm praying that it will be so you guys take care God bless you and have a wonderful week we love you bye